You know how it is to be sitting on the side of the road or at the track or something needing a wide band sensor and you don't have one. You forgot to order your spares off Amazon. Will one from the auto parts store work? Stick around. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and listen, wideband airflow sensor from the auto parts store. This one's from Advance Auto, our buddies down there. That's who I always go to. Uh, it's about 80 bucks for this off the shelf. And the question is, will this work to replace our AEM sensor? Now, listen, AEM says that you gotta use our sensor. Everybody says you gotta use our wideband sensor. It's fooey. Don't listen to them. So normally I buy replacements. I buy the cheap ones off Amazon in packs of three. That way if one shows up dead on arrival, I throw it away. It's like 40 bucks for three of them. But sometimes we get stuck on the side of the road or at the track or something, and we need to be able to run out and get one. And that's where part number 17212 comes into play. And for all intents and purposes, this is just an LSU 4.9 has the correct end on it. Let me go ahead and step up in here. Look at that. Ah, rather short. There might be a part number out there that will get you a little bit longer one. The tip looks a little bit different. I don't know. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. What we're going to do though is because this one is one that we picked up at the auto parts store. We're going to plug this thing in. If it registers, we're going to do a free air calibration on it before we install it. So I know the one that's in here is dead. I needed a replacement. I needed it in a timely manner. So I got this one. Be aware, this thing heats up. You don't want this on something that's going to burn. Put it on a piece of metal or something as I knock my drink over. Oh, no! Okay. We'll put it on top of the radiator. That gets hot. So I'm going to point the camera at the gauge. Let's see if it recognizes it. Okay, after finding out I had a short my heater wire, let's try this again. So we found the LSU 4.9. We're going into the heat cycle. Let's see if we get all the way to the heat cycle and get our full lean so we can do our free air calibration. There we go. Okay, so sensor's good. FR02 cow. Confirm free air calibration in progress. Free air cow. And pass. So we should be good. We can go ahead, install the sensor now. Okay, we've got our sensor in. Let's fire it up, see if it starts reading. There it is. We're good to go. So not the cheapest way, but possibly the quickest way to get yourself out of a GM, especially if you're dealing with a system like this that is very reliant upon closed loop operation. Don't get caught up in the fact that everybody tries to tell you that you have to use their sensor. As long as the connector is the same, you should be good to go. There are a couple outliers out there. Uh, you got to be careful with the Holly stuff. They're kind of a pain in the butt as usual. What else is new? But you can rewire those connectors to work with the standard 4.9 or 4.2. And then you just go out there and get yourself one of these, 17212. So I'm going to get back to it. You guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.